Hello, this is National Chess Master All Rats at chess.com. I'm here to analyze the game submitted by Talminator. Uh, this is for my member best game thread. You can post any game you want. As long as there's entries in there, I'll keep uh, making videos. As soon as I catch up, I'm going to close it because I've got a lot of things to do for the group. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm happy to keep making them as long as I keep submitting them. Uh, one per person. All right. This was played at a time control of 45-45, and what that translates to mean is both sides start out with 45 minutes on their clock, and every time they move, they get a 45-second increment added. So, uh, generally speaking, a good game should last about three hours, provided both sides take their time. Now, 45-45 uh, has been a very popular time control on the internet. Another server has run a league for a oh, good 13-14 years using it. And I have made countless videos uh, for that other league. And one thing that's in common that I find is a lot of players do not take their time. They rush their moves. How many times do they finish the game with more time than they started? Well, I can't say about this game because there's no timestamp on uh, on the chess.com live server, so I don't know what they took. Unless somebody tells me, I'm not going to know. Uh, but I'll say one thing: you know, if you look at the ratings, they're at the lower uh, end of the spectrum. Uh, but I thought the play of, of this game was pretty good overall. If uh, if White had submitted this game with both players having a 15 or 1600 rating. I would have believed it. I mean, I think they're playing decent games uh, of chess. There's uh, going to be flaws, uh, but we expect that. Nobody's perfect. I mean, there's flaws in my games. I mean, my goodness, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to criticize anybody just because they played a flawed game. The idea is let's uh, go over your game, find out what you're doing, and see what kind of suggestions we can make. And Talmudator provided a number of comments, and I'll quote them when I get to them. Let's get to the nitty-gritty and see what happens. Okay, uh, this is considered or called the Philidor defense. It's a very solid uh, opening for black. It's not the most popular, but uh, white shouldn't get anything more than the advantage of the first move out of it. The most common move is d4. That doesn't mean white has to play it, but you guys have to be prepared for it. And I'm not going to analyze that because that's beyond the scope of the video. You guys that play the Philidor defense or want to know how to play against the Philidor defense, you got to do some work too. I can't show you everything. You'll learn when, when you go and look. Okay, bishop c4 is the other uh, variation. White, play, white plays is fine. It's development. Okay, so black makes uh, c6. Now, it might seem a little peculiar, but actually it, it, it's a fine move. Black has a chance to transpose into something, and I'll show you here in a moment. Okay, white continues with d4. Now, this is the point when black needs to go into uh, established opening theory with, with knight d7. Now, maybe black doesn't know the line, and you might ask, what's the purpose of knight d7? Okay, well, that's a good question. Uh, you're maintaining a strong point of e5. The e5 is under fire. And by putting the knight on d7, black is able to maintain that strong point if there's a capture on e5 by, re by recapturing uh, with his pawn. And because this knight's on d7, white is unable to uh, make a queen exchange, depriving black of the uh, privilege of castling. And soon, soon, not just yet, but soon, black will, uh, after it goes into that line, black will develop his queen to c7, clearing the back rank. And, and that's a fine square for the queen. And this, see this little guy, this pawn on c6? It's doing some nice double duty. It's, it's covering two squares that white would like to uh, play to, play the knight to, okay, and, and evict that queen, okay? So black has will have a very solid game. But anyway, what black does is kind of surprising. He surrenders the center. Now, it's not the best move, okay? It doesn't mean that black's going to lose. But we, we, and we can't expect players to keep finding the best move, you know, this level. It's not going to happen. There's going to be a lot of these games go back and forth. Uh, this is my experience in all the videos I've made. One side's a little better than the other side's a little better. But that's okay. Uh, we can still get uh, value out of these games by going over them and helping teach you how to do the one thing you need to do the most, learn how to analyze, especially when it comes down to your games. So uh, this move, as I say, surrenders the center. Uh, 
black has not maintained this this strong point of a of a pawn on e5 and now white has access to both the d4 and the f4 square something he didn't have be, uh, before this okay so what's happened here white has two pieces developed black has none except for a couple pawns on this third rank black's entire uh, army is where it started right and then one pawn has has been exchanged so what does black need to do right now well if you've watched my videos you know what the answer is okay the answer is he's got to develop something okay so what black does is black makes a move uh, I'll make a comment uh, I'll, I'll also share what what uh, Tominator says black plays this very peculiar move h6 now why is it peculiar well it's peculiar because everyone's playing it well, now I don't mean everyone I mean a lot of people are playing it and and, and it's interesting Tominator's comment here I've been seeing opponents make this move h6 or h3 early often recently it seems premature well yes it is premature okay let's talk about it uh, first off as I say I have seen this move come up countless times in games I'm looking at it it doesn't help black at all it hurts him and if you're white and you see this move happen you smile and I'm gonna give you reasons to smile here in a little bit uh, but first off let's cover this move uh, if everyone saw my videos nobody would play this move anymore okay so send people to see my videos <laughs> you know do them a favor uh, if if I put a game of yours uh, tell your opponent hey there's a video this game made you want him to get better because then he can help next time you play him he can he can help you get better okay if everyone got better at chess you'd play you'd be playing better players and you'd get better right okay so what first off what's wrong with h6 well first off it doesn't do what I said black needs to do you know the answer to that develop much better to develop a piece black had a whole bunch of pieces on the back rank could have picked almost any one of them not as rooks okay but uh, knight f6 would have been perfectly uh, acceptable okay so what else is wrong with h6 it weakens the black king side now uh, black may eventually castle king side here and when he does uh, his pawn structure uh, loses a little bit of flexibility because uh, sometimes black does need to weaken his structure to, to parry off a threat but it's it's even a little weaker now now I've seen some players at the amateur level they will play an early h6 and for for a completely different reason the long-range plan is to castle long or queen side okay and then hope that white castles king side and then eventually what black does is he starts upon assault and h6 is a preparation move well you know what that that is an interesting plan I'm not going to discuss it but I'll say one thing it's too early to do that plan okay it's way too early black doesn't have any development yet and what if white decides he wants to castle queenside then then uh, <laughs> the pawn advance is, is a little premature and there's one other reason why people do this uh, play this h6 move they don't want something coming to g5 now usually in a normal position uh, one side will have the option White will have an option of putting a bishop or a knight there well this knight's moved to d4 it's not going there that means this bishop is going there if that's what white wants to do so what I like to do it, it just to make an illustration is show just de by demonstration why black has absolute absolutely nothing to fear about white playing uh, a piece to that square here we go as I said this is the recommended move now let's suppose white plays bishop g5 okay he's done it well you know see this little pawn on c6 remember I talked about the duty was doing he was helping secure the queen well it's still watching d5 so uh, white's not going to be able to attack that pin piece okay and black just simply breaks the pin prepares the castle and what does white have here uh, well white's got a reasonable game but white has no uh, tangible advantage as a matter of fact black looks okay even better than the real game because his kingside pawn structure is intact and he's ready to castle what's wrong with development well nothing's wrong with development that's the answer so you don't want to make moves like like you've seen here and and again you want to smile okay when they happen because good things can happen for you when they make these moves so let's back it up 
And okay. Oh, wrong one. H six. Okay, let's let's find it. Okay. And as I said, you should smile. Now what do you do? Well, what do you do? I've given the answer. I give it every practically every video. What what should white do here? Develop. Okay. Um, free squares, all kinds of free squares for this bishop. Get ready to castle. White makes a peculiar move, and and we'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, but the logical thing to do is develop. If white develops just a simple move like bishop e2, suddenly white has three pieces out and black has none. Okay, white will be two and a half tempos ahead in development. Well, what white does is he plays, like I said, he plays a peculiar move, and it's not the best move, but an important thing is that white tells us why he played that move. So that's good. We can, we can discuss uh, his reasoning, and and we can make an evaluation and help him out, because that's the whole purpose here. Uh, his move surprised me. White plays uh, a b4. Now, that seems to, like I say, seems to be peculiar. But let's see what uh, White's reasoning is, okay? I made this move thinking I would discourage the c5 pawn, c5 pawn push, but he still could have pushed it. Okay, so, again, we've had a problem with h6. There's something wrong with it. Well, similar things are wrong with b4, okay? The, ma the, the, the first and foremost reason is what White needs to do is... Develop, okay? That's not a developing move. It, it may come in, become a handy move later, but let's get our development done first. Then we can consider plans like that, okay? And so what if black attacks this knight? You know, so what? What else is he going to do? Uh, he's just moving pawns, okay? But let's, oops, let's get back to where we were. Let's just, for the moment, Let's let's examine this move. Let's see what did White have to to fear. Okay, what did he have to fear, if anything? Okay, uh, or what did Black have to fear? Well, what are we going to do? This this pawn's under attack, which will temple this knight. This knight's under attack. So, logically speaking, we probably need to take. Okay, now let's take a look. Black's going to retake. Now we've got to deal with this knight. Where does this knight go? If we put the knight on b5, and I'll I'll give it a, a shot. What black could what black could consider doing is exchanging queens. Now probably what white needs to do is keep casting privileges and take with the knight. Now black has has a little problem here on a6. Okay, got to watch out for that knight fork, but that's easy to take care of. You just play knight a6. Okay, so a couple questions. Has White gained anything out of this? And the answer is no, he really hasn't. Okay, uh, except for that knight on b5, which really has no threat now. All of White's uh, army is on the back rank. White has not completed his development. White is not ready to make threats. White is not ready to con uh, conduct any kind of attack. And the fact that this weakness was made is less telling. It's more telling if queens are on the board because then there's potential uh, attack attacks against uh, uh, a, a black king that may castle kingside. So uh, the weakness that black has made, uh, white said, well, you know what? Yeah, you made a weakness there. I'm forgiving you. You know, I'll let you off the hook. Well, we don't want to let anybody off the hook in chess. We got to go for the jugular. Okay. Now white doesn't have to play this this line. Let's 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 look a little more. Uh, white has a, a better move. Okay, and like I said, I don't want to go into too many tangents. I like to leave food on the table for you guys to munch on and try and sort out. Uh, white has this bishop check. Now, black doesn't want to move his king, you know, block his bishop and have his kings in the center exposed. And taking on or interposing on c6 may cause some problems after knight takes because uh, black's just kind of a, tied up here if pawn takes, bishop takes pawn check, we're on a fork. So what black needs to do is is play uh, bishop d7. Now white is free to save his knight without worrying about a queen trade. 
Now, if black decides to trade bishops, um, well, white can probably do a queen trade fine here. And I'll just, just show you a bishop takes. Now, you know, here I was against a queen trade earlier, but this, this has the advantage that it displaces the, uh, uh, the black king. Now, white can't, and then, oh, wait, white has to regain his peace. But um, that's fine. Okay. White will castle. White will have a, a rook coming to the D file with check. But but again, yet again, uh, we've kind of let black off the hook with his weakness on the king side. And what's happened, unfortunately, if, now if you look at it at this position, is that white has two weaknesses on the queen side. Okay, those the pawns on a2 and c2 are not connected. They're weak. They can uh, if they get attacked later. Uh, they can't defend each other. One can't defend the other. So potentially, not now, but potentially, uh, those pawns could be targets for black and, and help black out. So whose pawn structure is weaker here? Uh, black with his weak pawn on weakness on h6 or white with his isolated pawns? If you notice, both sides have a, a pawn majority on one side of the board. But the answer to whose pawns are weaker is white's pawns are weaker simply because his are isolated. At least blacks are connected. Okay? Uh, and white's not going to be able to do much, if any, ex exploiting of that fact at all. And these uh, pawns on a2 and c2 can come back and haunt them later. So, as I was saying, white probably doesn't want to trade queens, but he's probably going to have to. Okay? He's probably going to have to because what else is there? Um, you know, you have a knight under attack that you got to deal with. So the c5 move that he was trying to avoid and stop wasn't all that bad. But in addition, black has another move that white didn't consider. And I, this is probably a better move. And here it is. It's d5. Now what d5 does is suddenly this uncovers an attack on the b4 pawn. And at the same time, it uh, uh, it's putting some pressure on e4. It's avoiding uh, white getting a, a bishop developed with check. Okay, so how's white going to handle this? Uh, does he want to move his pawn again? Well, here's white moving a lot of pawns too early. Uh, black may just push c5 by, and uh, and and he's got probably got get, getting close to full equality. White's busy making pawn moves instead of developing. And and if white takes, uh, black will take this way, right? Take take the pawn on b4. Now white has to stop and cover this weakness. And I think black is coming out of this okay too, especially since we see that white is going to be saddled with those permanently weak pawns. So your idea. Uh, I'm glad you explained your idea. You know, it makes sense. And it's good that you have an idea. It, 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 the fact is, it's not the right idea. But don't worry about the, being the right idea. You read it, look at your rating. You know, you're learning. Uh, at least you have an idea. Uh, I mean, how many times did I play games back in when I was even rated 1400 where I had no idea what I was doing? I was just playing reactionary moves. So uh, having a plan is better than having no plan. And I, and uh, even if you have a faulty plan, next time you won't. You know, you're learning. And I'm sh uh, sharing my, my knowledge with you. So, but now let's just go back to the key, the key point and where, where white played b4. And I said, what do you do when they play h6? You smile. Well, let's give white a reason to smile. Okay, now we'll play what I call fantasy chess. That's why I just pick one, maybe two fantasy lines. Uh, to see what could happen. Now, the way I play these, there's no magic to it. There's no, no ace, up, ace up my sleeve or rabbit in my hat or any cliche you want to think of. All I do to create uh, uh, a possible position is develop pieces for both sides. If there's a threat, I'll make it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to develop pieces. Now, I'm going to put this bishop on this square here, e2. The reason I don't go to c4 is because later black may 
play b5, attacking the bishop, followed by b4, attacking the knight. You know, that's two tempo gains, undermining defense of e4. And we'll see in a little bit why that might be important. There's nothing wrong with bishop c4. It's a good move. It's attacking f7. But I just don't want to have to deal with that nuisance. I want to illustrate my point. Okay? So, again, no rabbit up, no rabbit in my hat. I develop a piece for black. White develops. Black develops. White develops. And who cares if these aren't the best moves? We're just trying to illustrate a point. Now, boom. I've got uh, all the white pieces developed except for the queen rook. And the white rooks are connected. See? That's all I did. And look at black. Even though he's been developing, his entire queen side is sitting at home. This is how much big of an advantage white had. So what's black going to do here? If he tries b5, again, if the bishop was on c4, there would have been a tempo. White has time to deal with that. He just covers uh, e4 with maybe a move like f3. Black needs to develop. Where is he going to develop? Well, this bishop doesn't really have any good squares. Uh, Maybe the best one is g4. But the moment this bishop is traded off, this f5 square becomes very potent for white. Let's just illustrate it thusly. I'm going to develop the bishop on the b7 diagonal just to show you. Okay? I'm going to make white spend a tempo to shut his bishop in. Now, white doesn't have to play that. There's other moves. We could play a3 there and stop it. Okay? But I'm, that's a whole other line. We can't cover all lines. We'll be here all day. And now black develops his his bishop and then white develops his rook and now black's catching up in development but notice though one thing it's white that's still ahead in development now white has this wonderful little outpost f5 and now the weakness of uh of h of, of black playing pawn h6 comes into play black cannot play g6 to chase that knight out of there because knight is going to take on h6 with check. And if black's not careful here, uh, white may be administrating a checkmate. There's some sacrifices here. I can't say they're sound without looking at them, but let's take a look. This will teach you how to analyze. Okay, let's just develop a black piece just for the sake of, of, of illustration. Okay, so white sacrifices this bishop here. The purpose being if pawn takes... Uh, we put the queen on on uh, h6, and we have this little mate threat that black needs to deal with. How is black going to deal with that? Well, he's either got to give up a piece with knight h5 to guard it, or he needs to play knight e8. Now, white has sacrificed a piece for two pawns. Is it enough? Well, I don't know. It might, and it might not be. Uh, but it looks like a headache for black defending this. Because white's going to play f4. Well, he doesn't have to, but he could play f4. He might need to. Otherwise, maybe bishop g5 will be annoying. But f4 has a double threat. Rook to, rook to f3 and rook to d3. Either one will work. And then black's planning to, or white's planning to uh, run over to g3 with check. And... Black's close to losing this. How does Black defend this? Uh, you know, it's not an enviable task. Uh, I don't know. Let's try this. I come here. Uh, you need some defense. Uh, where are we going to get it from? Okay. Now, at least the bishop's guarded by the knight, so white pins. And I don't know. This looks awful shaky for black. There's so many pins and tactics and tricks. Uh, I don't know. And besides, maybe white had a better move here. What's wrong with... No, you can't pin, No, you can't play rook h3. The queen's hanging. Okay, so rook g3, queen f6. Do you want to defend this position as black? Do you? I don't. I don't want to have to work on this. Uh, because even if... White just comes back with, uh, well, let's see, queen h3, even if, well, queen h5 is not bad. Uh, if white just comes back with queen h5, how does black continue this? What does he do to, to get rid of the pressure? Um, 
in order to make a flight square for the king, this knight has to come to c7 so this rook can move so the king can get out. That's a lot of moves. Let's try it, see what happens. And I don't know if this is forced. I'm just analyzing. This is how you analyze. Now, before I made developing moves, now I'm making attack, attack and defense moves. Okay, good. I created some squares for the king. Okay. Now, white to play. What does he do? Well, let's... Let's put the let's put the heat on this bishop, okay? <laughs> uh, it's thrice attacked and twice defended, so black needs a defender. Let's bring this knight back. Um, you know, white so close to having a win here. Uh, it isn't even funny. Here's 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 an interesting move. Rook takes d6 just out of the blue. Attacks the queen, um, which is guarding g7, and we're gonna just we're sacrificing a rook to to keep attacking over here. Okay, now let's see. How do we want to take? Uh, let's take with the knight. And you know, I don't know if there's any good. I'm just just playing around. Now we got threats of e5. Uh, we've got threats of of uh, knight h5, and sticking a rook down here. I mean. You don't want to have to defend this position as black. And all this is made possible simply because white developed, even though I had black develop, white developed its pieces and black made a weakness in the opening. So the opportunities are going to arise if you develop and your opponent doesn't. And uh, that's the long and short of it. So that's kind of a lengthy uh, uh, digression uh, on, on how to play... Uh, play your opening a little bit better by developing. Good things happen. So let's get back to the game and and see what actually did happen. Okay, got to find it here in the PGN. Okay, black uh, black developed a piece, which is good. Now white's uh, shoving pawns. Now white's not developing. You need to shove pawns, and he gives a reason, which is good. I made this trying to entice my opponent into trading on b5. I plan to take with my bishop and bring my dark squared bishop to b2 or a3. Okay. Um, you know, one thing when I was rated low uh, 1400s and unrated, I used to play moves to entice my opponents to do something. And they, if they were weak players, they may very well do exactly what I wanted. But if they were my equal or better, they'd say, what's he doing now? Ah, oh, I see what he's doing. And they would go and wouldn't fall into it and play a good move. Okay? So, eh, what can I say? Uh, you need to develop, okay? And you're, although you have a plan, you need to develop. And black shouldn't take on, on, uh, on b5. So what black does is black realizes that he's got a problem on c6 and he shoves by. So now we've got what he could have done earlier. Uh, and now the knight comes back. I mean, in, in the other line. But where uh, there was an exchange on c5. The only difference now is uh, the a2 and c2 pawns are still kind of weak. But uh, at least they can support the pawn on b5. Black, black has fewer open lines to get at to get out those pawns. But the white queen side pawn structure is weak. Okay? So black develops and white develops. Now good. Now they're starting to develop. So it seems like uh, in spite of a, a, f a few little misfires on both sides, uh, they're starting to play play well now. And here's comment knight g4. He's fighting for e5. Well it's good that you recognize that e5's a good place to for black to, to occupy. Okay, so let's, uh, with a knight, so let's look further. And here, white's also fighting for e5. And eyeballing this king. Okay, that's a good, good plan. A very good plan to have. Okay, so black develops. And here we got a comment. I wanted to open the long diagonal and also create an eternal knight on d5. Okay, what he means by an eternal knight is... Uh, that knight's not leaving under without being exchanged. Okay, black cannot chase it out with a pawn. White has found a tremendous outpost, and uh, 
Okay, so um, now black plays knight d e5. Now here, I was kind of surprised. Uh, after white's comment, he wants an eternal knight, he now decides to trade it off. Okay, uh, and he does take on e7, and his comment is, uh, knight, wait, I wanted to make certain to capture his dark squared bishop, making mine stronger, you know, meaning this one, and I want to keep the bishop pair. So, in other words, the, the problem he's talking about with the bishop pair, see, this this bishop's a, a little loose. He's got to he's got to save it. But let's let's pause for a moment and evaluate this. Okay. One moment White's saying he wants an eternal knight, and the next moment he wants the bishop pair. Okay. For what it's worth, Black has uh, occupied e5. That doesn't mean White can't chase him out of there. But this is such a great knight to have. And this bishop has such little scope. Uh, let's not take it. Okay? It's, if you get a knight on that square, try to keep it there. Although there's nothing wrong with it, I think it's uh, a better choice to keep, to keep, the, uh, to keep the knight on d5. Okay, because it's just such an outpost. I'm going to, such a wonderful outpost. I'm going to put the bishop on e2 instead. Now let's analyze this and see what we can come up with. Um, how's, how is black going to react to this? Well, what he should do is, you know the answer, develop. Let's develop something. Let's put this bishop here. Now let's see what, what if anything, white can gain out of this. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try h3. We're trying to challenge. There's a reason for this. Uh, although a perfectly logical move is to play queen d2, which develops something. Matter of fact, let's just do it. Okay, let's just get it done. And let black develop something. Let's put the rook over here. Okay, now I'm going to play h3. Now, if the knight comes back to f6, then uh, white can trade on uh, on f on uh, e5 and i believe he's winning a pawn so i think what black has to do is is wish to can play this knight takes check now he comes back to e5 with the knight and now we drop the bishop back now notice we white has now taken g4 away from uh from black much like black had taken g5 away from white but there's a difference here and the difference is that White's getting ready to chase that knight again and open up this diagonal. So let's make a move for black. What are we going to do? What do I always say? Well, you got to be careful about developing. If queen goes to d7, f4 is going to be very potent. So let's develop this rook here. And you'll see why in a moment. Where does the knight go? Uh, oh, it's got problems, doesn't it? I don't know if we want to play f5 yet. It does happen in the game. We might want to sit on this, uh, sit on this position for a while. Suppose we have possibilities of playing queen c3, making black back something up. That's good when you get your opponent to back things up to defend. But white has a good position here. Now white still has a good position, but I like my own prefer preference is to keep as many pieces on the board as I can. And I don't want to trade a good piece for a passive piece. Because when you do that, your good piece is gone, and your opponent's passive piece is still there. I mean, I mean, it's gone also. So let's back up. That's just a sample line, something that White can look at on his own. OK, so whoop, he didn't play bishop e2. He plays knight takes. Now, like I say, you've given up a, an active piece for a passive piece. But, he's, but White's right. This bishop has no counterpart. Uh, but, I, but I like to have the extra piece. That's my own preference. And now here goes another piece. And now White needs to cover this, this bishop. He comes up with, with this move, and it gets kind of tricky. Uh, the point being if if c4 uh, white plays 
uh, bishop takes e5 and will win, either win this pawn on c4 or win the pawn on d6. So black retreats this knight and he says, I'm not sure why he moved his knight away. The knight was fine there. So now white gets a grip on things. He develops, covers his pawn, although you could practically sacrifice it and just have an open line for the rook. Okay, a4. Now this kind of helps white a little bit, getting the pawns locked up over there. Now the pawn is a little stronger on a4 than it was on a2. Okay, here he says, I didn't want his light squared bishop disturbed. I like that that his f7 pawn is pinned. Okay, so white does want to preserve uh, bishop on that diagonal. Okay, so let's go forward. Knight e5, he comes back. Probably just didn't have any idea. And here comes f4, much like in the game. And uh, he says, here I considered f5 followed by you know, f5 followed by queen g4, which has mates in I, in mind, but black can uh, put the knight back on e5 in that case, and the plan is stopped, so he needs to do it more slowly. And a good thing about having these pawns on this squa these squares is they have, they have such a nice influence in the black position. You're covering both light and dark squares and you're covering four of them in a row. Black cannot move any piece to those squares. And even a pawn move for those squares could be dangerous because it'll expose black's uh, position in some respects. So sometimes you want to keep them there as long as you can. <coughs> Excuse me. Do things more slowly. Okay. So it's good not to push him. So white just develops his queen. This is good. And now as black knows, he's unpinning the F7 uh, pawn. Had he moved to h8, the g7 pawn would be pinned. And then finally here on move 20, white completes his development. This was the only piece not involved. So good, he's got his development complete. Now look at black. I'm beginning to wonder when and if he's ever going to bring these these two guys in. Okay. Uh, b6. Now white feels is the time to do this. Black comes into e5. And now uh, queen g3. Now how does how does white continue here? Uh, or how does black continue? You know, black is close to getting a kind of a blockade here. Uh, it's weakening, but f6. F6, at some point, uh, white's going to have to play for an h4, g5 break. Okay? But if he takes on e5, he's getting rid of his good piece, his good bishop. But that knight is entrenched on e5. It might have been better for white to avoid playing f5 for a, a little longer. Maybe uh, get g4 and g uh, g4 and h4 in first. Prepare those moves and try for g5. Okay, before before uh, seeding the e5 square back. But it's a whole other ball game. That's a whole other bit of analysis, and I just want to create food for thought so White can sit down and analyze this. And uh, here, C White uh, Black plays c4. I think he hoped I'd capture the pawn or run away, but I still have a threatened mate on uh, g7. Now, here, I think White had a very interesting move uh, that he didn't play and he didn't mention. What White does is fine, okay? Uh, but I was I I I looked at it because it has an immediate threat. Okay, it's a tactical motive, uh, and it's not all that easy to see everything. But I'll just go ahead and show you. Rook takes d6 is a very inter interesting move. Okay, uh, what does what does Black do? For instance, if Queen takes d6. Uh, White has bishop takes e5. Now this part's easy to see. Now you've got a threat on the queen and a threat on the king. And it looks like black can't deal with it. But black has this little check here. Okay. But, you know, the proverbial but, <laughs> uh, white still has some threats here. The mate threat hasn't gone away. 
So white's also threatening perhaps bishop d6. So let's defend the mate with the rook, get the rook off that diagonal. And it's not the easiest combination to see, but but here bishop d6. Now where does where does black put the queen? Well, it's a little it's not that easy. Okay, that's about the only open square I could find. And now there's this clever move, c3. Okay, where now where does uh <laughs> what does black do? He's running out of squares for the queen. Well, he's got d3 and d2. d3 is interesting. Well, so is d2, but I'm just going to look at one. Now, we trade queens, and we get rid of the threat on our bishop. Now, chances are this pawn's a goner. It could be a nuisance, but with black not having completed development, it's a nuisance. Meanwhile, uh, white's got all kinds of potential here. You know, they get these open up the board for the bishops. Wow, look at that. Attacking a rook, getting ready to check, and suddenly these center pawns come marching up the board. Uh, like I said, there's one little nuisance here. We have to make sure it doesn't give us a headache, but we should be able to cover that down. I, I think this is a very interesting continuation uh, that white didn't, didn't play. So go ahead and work it on your own. Uh, there's one other line. Let me see in there. Okay. Rook takes d6. Uh, let's see. Suppose black tries. Suppose black takes the bishop. Doesn't bite. Well, you know, we, we still come back here and threaten mate. Okay. Now, uh, black has to deal with that. How is he going to do it? Uh, now, we've given up a whole rook for this but we we have we have uh some interesting attacking possibilities here unless i'm missing something let's see um i think i'm missing something because I, I know i looked at this and i'm not quite remembering it if you take you take it on d6 i think that's sound but taking this there's something wrong with that <coughs> um White's down. No, White's not down a rook. He's just down a piece. Okay, I apologize. I'm think I'm saying he's down a rook. Okay, but White's got White's got some pawns for the piece. Okay, and he's he's got an attack. That's that's where I was wrong. So how does how does White continue this? Uh, oh, pretty pretty much any way he wants. Uh, let's see. We can take this pawn, getting another pawn for the piece. And again, this pawn could be a nuisance down here. But with black not having development, chances are white's going to... Oh, white's not down a piece here at all. What am I thinking? I had white... I'm just not adding up pieces right. <laughs> okay, because you're getting this knight on e5. Yeah, this is a tremendous position for white. First I had him down a rook, now I have him down a piece. Oh, my goodness. I'm not tired. I am just can't see... The obvious sometimes. That's all. Have have a laugh at my expense. Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's nothing wrong with what White did, but but uh, there was an interesting interesting sacrifice uh, of Rook takes D6 on the board. Now I got to find the right spot in the PGN. Every time you play a sideline, it chess.com server makes it the main line. You got to hunt. Okay. So. There it is. What White did was he took on e5. And this is fine. It, it threatens a mate. Okay. But it does one thing. Okay. It allows black to liquidate. Now, this is fine from White's point of view. I was surprised to capture the queen, but I'm okay because I know I've won a pawn. Okay, so fine. Uh, but... At the same time, one drawback with this line is it takes away uh, mating attack chances. You, you're going to have more chances to win quicker when you have more pieces on the board. White's going to have to win this in the ending. There's a chance he could win it in the middle game. Okay, so we, we trade queens. Uh, and white wins his pawn. Now he has a point here. I... He makes a note. I now plan to exchange every 
everything down to kings and pawns, and of course win. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I have a lot of videos up in the Rat Pack of my chess career. That's my private group. Uh, my first 40 or so rated games. And my strategy when I was unrated and then 1400 was if I could win a pawn, I wanted to trade everything off as quickly as I could because I knew I'd win the ending. And what I found was that sometimes when I'd trade everything I'd off, I'd, I'd not do it very uh, well, and I would end up with a very bad game. And trying to get everything up, and the pawn, pawn I was ahead was, would be lost. And, you know, I'd just get myself in a world of trouble. Uh, let's talk about White's Pawn Plus for a moment. Okay. All these white pawns are on white squares, the color of his bishop. They're not they're kind of a liability. They're in the way of this bishop's mobility. Also, there are no real targets for this bishop in the ending. Black does have the better bishop. There's no doubt about it. But Black has one problem here, and that is he has no development. And and um that should mean should spell a lo a loss game for Black in a hurry. So anyway, and he wants to trade everything down. He says his opponent helps him, and really I don't. You know there just wasn't much. Uh, he finally develops the bishop, and now White's kind of blindly uh, just offering trades. Now I, th but. Uh, Black tries a few things here, but but he's really just helped White out. Now that forces him back. I know I can't prevent him from capturing the C pawn, but I need to capture another one of his. And White's going to be basically trading pawns and staying a pawn ahead. Okay, the rook comes down, and White goes after pawns, and Black goes after pawns, and White gobbles one. And for the moment, uh, black's got material equality, but not for long. This pawn is is going to be uh, promoting. There's really not anything black can do about it. That pawn is just too far gone. Uh, it's going to get, you know, it's clear it's going to get to b7 and and b4, and uh, black cannot thwart its advance. And, he's, and white. Uh, points out he's a surprise he didn't play bishop or rook b2 attacking the pawn but he had planned to trade a promoted pawn for a rook exactly because there's no way there's no defense and this game just falls apart quickly for black he plays on here comes the queen we're up a queen couple spy checks and then suddenly white has a very picturesque checkmate so again i thought the game was pretty well played and uh Again, it wouldn't have surprised me if if the ratings had said fifteen, sixteen hundred, and uh, hopefully I've given you some food for thought and ways to improve your your game. And for all those that watched, uh, what to do when your opponent plays h6? Just develop. And I want to thank everyone for taking the time to look at this video. I'll be back another one as soon as I can. Thanks and take care.